Okay, so hopefully you're coming over from the first part of the video and your, your wits back about you, and hopefully I do also. And what we are trying to do now is just <clears throat> finishing this algebra here on this problem. So this is what I did here. These are pi r thirds. These are pi, I mean pi r squared. These are pi r squared. So I want to put them together. So I'm just going to multiply this whole thing by 1 using 3 over 3. Right, so that would give us this. Right, and that would give us, wouldn't it, 12 thirds, right? So we have our 12 thirds here. And then when we add this to this, we'll get four pi r squareds over three plus 24 pi r's. Oh, look at this. This simplifies, doesn't it? Pi over this, and this simplifies. So this is just going to be 24 over r, isn't it? Yep, it's 24 over r. All right? And that's our surface area. So finally, we have all that crap done, and finally we're to the calculus of the matter. So remember what we were asked to do is we were asked to minimize the surface area given a specific volume. We got our volume in there. Remember that 12? That's this one up here. So now what we want to know is, what's the rate of change? So what we want to know is, what's the derivative, right, of S, of surface area? What's the rate of change of surface area given radius? So we're going to start to do this. And the way I'm going to break this out, if you don't mind, is I'm going to ask you to just stay with me and just say, I'm going to rewrite this as 4 thirds, actually 4 pi thirds, if you don't mind r squared plus, check this out for a second, 24 over r is the same as 24 r to the negative 1, isn't it? And this rewrite right here helps a ton when you're doing your differentiation. So I'm going to go ahead and do my differentiation here, and I'm going to get 8 pi thirds r, right? Negative 1 times 24 is negative 24, right? r to the negative 2. Two, so that's where I got my r to the negative 2. Remember, I can cure this negative exponent by putting it in the, in the denominator, can't I? So I'm just going to put it in the denominator like this, r squared. Okay? Now, we're looking for critical values here, right? So our critical values occur where the first derivative goes to 0 or is undefined. So that's what I want to look for now. Just want to start looking for that, and so I'm going to set this whole thing equal to zero, and I'm going to use something called means extremes theorem, which you call uh, cross multiplication, and it looks like this. I'm going to take this and start solving, and I get eight pi r over three is equal to twenty four over r squared. I'm going to cross multiply. Uh, I guess this way and then that way, so I get seventy two is equal to 8 pi r cubed, right? So from here, I'm just going to keep doing algebra here to try to find this critical value. And the critical value here is I'm going to divide by 8 pi, right? 8 pi, 8 pi. And that will give us, that will give us r cubed is equal to 9 over pi. Okay, and of course from there we have to keep solving for this critical value of r. So I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. And there's the cube root here. Here's the cube root here. So we get r is equal to the cube root of 9 over pi. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do now with me, I have to switch pages real quick. And as I do that... I'm going to bring with me the first derivative. And if you remember, the first derivative was <clears throat> eight, thir eight thirds pi times r, right? Minus 24 over 24 times 
r to the negative second power. And if you see, I brought this thing back up out of the denominator. And I want you to remember, right, this is the first derivative, right? This is the derivative of surface area with regard to radius. But what we have to do now is we have to take the second derivative, right? We note that we have this critical value. So we have our CV that we just brought with us, and our critical value was the cubed root of 9 over pi, okay? So now what we're going to do with that is we're, we need to take the second derivative. So we need to figure out, well, what is the second derivative of surface area with regard to radius? Why do we want that? Because we know some tendencies. We, for example, we know that if f double prime of c, c being our critical value, is less than 0, we have a max. If it's greater than 0, we have a minimum. We're looking for a minimum, right? So I'm going to take this derivative here. The first derivative of this is just 8 pi thirds, isn't it? And if you look at this, the first derivative of this is negative 2 times negative 1. It's positive 40, whoops, wow, positive 48 over r cubed, right? We're not going to set this to 0. We're going to do our second derivative test. We're going to take f double prime at c and see what it is, right? c is this critical value. <coughs> So we look at this and we say, okay, well, f double prime at the cube root of 9 pi, no, I'm sorry, 9 over pi is equal to, and all you have to do is look at this. Is this going to be a positive or a negative number? Well, this is going to be a positive number. A positive over a positive is a positive plus another positive, so it will be greater than 0. I don't need to know what that point is for this. I know it's greater than zero, and so what that tells us is we have a min. And what did we minimize? We minimized surface area, right? So our minimum surface area is when the radius, so we have a minimum at, at r equals the cubed root of 9 over pi, and h equals 0. How do I know h equals 0? I went back and, and substituted it into the original equation. So I hope this was helpful. Please give me your comments. And this, I promise you, you guys, you're going to have to know this to do well on the, on the exam. So I wish you well. Keep up the hard work.